important of apparently it is. Apparently it is important of things to come. Check, 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 check. check. What is up with this? By the way, this didn't happen yesterday when I thought I was broadcasting. So let me go get around to the sound and see what is happening. Check one, two, check. Oh. Well, I'm going to try something real quick. This might not be pretty. Don't try this at home. Check one, two. Well, let's hope that works a little bit better. Let's see. I'm so sorry about having to do this extra sound check. Like I said, it worked yesterday, it worked earlier when I did the sound check. Wants to behave, or I should say, misbehave right now. So I apologize for that. Although, you know what? I can always edit that out if I want to. Um, so that was uh, Sea Jam Blues. and. Uh, CHM Blues was uh, first recorded for a soundy, which was basically a music video that they would play in between feature films uh, in the screens, uh, the flickers in the movies. And uh, it was done around 1941, 42. Uh, this is a song that was originally an instrumental, and uh, it eventually got lyrics by uh, a relatively uh, frequent collaborator at times with the Ellington Orchestra, Frankie Lane, the uh, wonderful pop singer of the late 40s and really into the 50s and into the 60s, uh, did a wide range of material ranging from standards to jazz, and this was one he penned a lyric to. <laughs>
soon. Um, uh, obviously, we're paying tribute to uh, predominantly uh, Duke Ellington, Edward Kennedy Duke Ellington, and uh, one of his most frequent uh, and most important partners, uh, someone without whom, as great as he was, he wouldn't have become as wonderful and as transcendent as he was later on in his career, and that's uh, Billy Strayhorn. Um, you know, they, they kind of uh, really dovetail each other, and it's the sound still doing it. This is just incredible. I'm going to try something else. It, it really is uh, disheartening that you go through all this prep, do a wonderful program last night that doesn't go out, and then when you do go on, this happens. Well, get lemons, you make lemonade. So give me a moment. I'm going to try this one more time. Let's see if that works better. Oh, there we go. And I can hear myself again. And more importantly, hopefully you can hear me again. So, um, there, there's some wonderful history with Duke's music. And uh, Duke didn't think of it as jazz. He thought of it as American music because his music really ran the gamut. Uh, everything from folk and blues influence to spiritual, to jazz, to modern classical, to swing, you name it. Duke had it in his music. And uh, this, this is one that shows you where you can sometimes get a, a great song from almost anywhere. He was sharing a cab uptown with Nick Kenny, who was a poet. And uh, Nick apparently had the cab first and uh, said, where should we drop you? And he said, drop me off in Harlem. Okay, well, two or three days later, Nick presented him with uh, a poem or a lyric and uh, Duke had a song and that that is this one Tone. Feeling bad 
fancy free And I'm not alone I got company Everything's okay The live long day With this mellow song
great tune. I'm gonna check to see who's out there. I know this was kind of unannounced. Oh, the only pro promise I had was that I would come back on sometime today. So it is on, amazingly, because everything else has gone wrong thus far. But, uh, yeah, I see you. How are you? How are you? Thank you for coming out. And uh, again, feel free to create watch parties that helps bring people to it. Um, and uh, feel free to say hi. Just gonna take a quick drink. Uh, this next song um, was originally called Concerto for Cootie. Cootie Williams was a, a trumpeter in Duke's band for many years. And uh, a couple years after it had been written, Bob Russell, who wrote a decent number of lyrics for Allen's and Tunes, put this lyric to it. Someone told someone and someone told me But they wouldn't hurt you Since everyone spreads the story with his own little personal touch Do nothing to you here for me Pay no attention to what I say Saturday. 
So, um, this was a, uh, a beautiful tune, and it was uh, composed kind of ad hoc. Um, Duke was doing a, a gig down in North Carolina, literally in a barn. And uh, after the gig, the, the owner uh, decided, well, let me throw a little party. And so there's a party and didn't quite get the impression whether it was literal or figurative in this portion of the story. But Duke said there were a couple chicks that were hounding him, one on his right and one on his left. I'm assuming of the female variety, but maybe of the foul variety as well, because it wasn't a barn. Uh, and uh, so he sat down and composed this on the spot. The lyrics didn't get composed on the spot, but the tune did apparently. And uh, I, I wish I could compose something this good on the spot. <laughs> Tease me, but please don't tease me. I get 
This is uh, just a gorgeous tune, um, and Mitchell Parrish is credited with the lyric on this. Unfortunately, so is Irving. Irving Mills, not Irving Berlin. And uh, just gorgeous tune. And this is one that it, even though it was written before uh, Strayhorn really came into the band by about several years, it sounds like something that Strayhorn would have had an influence on because it seemed like. Duke was starting to move into more of a chromatic and uh, dense harmonic region with his composing when Billy came on. Um, that's where they kind of dovetailed with each other. We're going to get some stray horn in a bit, but this is just too wonderful to not get to today.
lines Time and shine Dance and dine With some man In a restaurant Is that all you really want? No, this is the So the story behind that lyric is um, Duke entitled a sophisticated lady and was dedicated really in his mind to three teachers he had in grammar school in Washington and um, they would teach all winter and then tour Europe in, in the summer and he just thought that was the epitome of sophistication. Um, and uh, when they presented him with the lyric by Mitchell Parrish, he said, well, it's great, I approve it, it's not what I had in mind, uh, but sometimes what we want uh, isn't always what uh, turns out to be best. I couldn't imagine a lyric about grammar school teachers touring, working quite as well uh, with that beautiful soaring melody. So here is my first definite straight horn tune. Um, it has both their names on it, but I, I definitely think this has more uh, straight horn sensibilities. Uh, they actually did a whole bunch of uh, research into this. I'll go into it a little bit today and then the next time I do the uh, Ellington and with the size straight horn I'll go into a little bit more but they've done a lot of work to try to unearth who did what. Uh, some of it musicology, some of it literally going back to manuscripts and seeing you know whose writing it was on different portions. Um, so here it is. Measure 
two measures of three because uh, I thought the lyric worked better that way, but hope you like it nonetheless. Uh, this is one of those quintessential tunes, another one of those jam session tunes that everyone knows. Um, when I first started improvisation lessons with Jimmy Bruno, uh, not on guitar, on voice, uh, and don't blame him for the piano playing, uh, he said, pick a tune you really love because we're going to work on it for a while. Uh, he said, particularly one I wanted to start with two fives. And uh, so I picked this tune. And uh, I do love the tune. It's just for a while I had to get away from it because he worked on it so much. Um, and this is one where uh, the lyric came after uh, the song had been commercially recorded and released. Uh, Mercer heard it on the radio, uh, called up as he was wont to do, uh, asked uh, what it was then got in touch with uh, Duke and his publisher, put a lyric to it, and so here it is. Just 
felt that way at times. Um, this was a beautiful tune um, with a lyric by Paul Webster. Um, and it was originally sung by Ivy Anderson, who was not the Duke Ellington Orchestra's first vocalist, but the first full-time vocalist they carried with them when they toured. And uh, I fell in love with this tune, uh, with Sinatra's version, um, but he didn't do the verse, and I dearly love the verse. <laughs> He did 
concert halls. He did Broadway shows. He had a Broadway show during his life, and then they did a, a Broadway show, uh, a, rev a review called Sophisticated Ladies that was very successful. I, I believe D.D. Bridgewater was in the original production of that. Um, and uh, he also did sacred music. And within his band, he, he had a wonderful cast of characters, uh, both figuratively uh, as well as musically. And uh, one of them was Juan Tissol. Um And uh, this is a song that Juan is co credited with Duke uh, called Caravan. Now, the lyric is credited to Irving Mills. Again, I don't know how much of that is true. Um, you know, uh, I, I look at stuff like that askance because I, I just don't think he wrote much that he put his name to. Uh, but it's, it's a pretty good lyric and it fits with the melody. Hope you like this. shine so bright the mystery of their fading light that shines upon our caravan sleep up on my shoulder as we creep across the sand so I am the key this memory of our caravan Like a flower crying 
can't get much better than the Holly of Jackson. Uh, hope you like this. Jason Long, it's a, it's really a kind of a mix if you took Bennett and Evans and put it with Sinatra's in the wee small hours like that. And then the latest uh, scenes from an Italian, basically Billy Joel deranged into jazz. They're all available at Bandcamp for download. Uh, so please give a listen and uh, please follow on Facebook and make sure that you uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's a lot of really nice stuff on there, if I do say so myself. Uh, some excellent musicians with me uh, who, although a lot of them are local or from Philly, they are world-class musicians nonetheless. Um, and please come back uh, and see me next time. The next time I'll be doing a, another Atlington songbook uh, with a lot of the wonderful tunes I didn't get to today. There's no way I could have fit them all in. I would have had to do one long Mel Torme-esque medley to do that. And I didn't want to give Duke short shrift. So thank you, and good night.